Howdy, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this time I'm going to talk about my little Cameron micro drill press and how to remove the chuck. And the chuck is held on there with a number zero Jacobs taper. So that'll be the discussion. I'm going to need some very small wedges to do that. Well, why am I going to remove that little chuck? I've been real busy lately and I need to take some time off and visit my eye doctor. Lately I've been seeing double. So I'm having a little trouble making these videos. But uh, this is a tiny little chuck and it's a German made Albrecht chuck. They're pretty expensive. And that's what I'm going to remove. It might be very helpful for you if you go back and watch tips number 448 where I talk about the various different Jacobs tapers, what they are, all the different sizes, a lot of related information, so check that out. All right, I was just messing with you. There are two of these. They look like twins, don't they? So we're not seeing double. But I've had this one for many, many years. I got it at an auction, and I love this drill press for my little pilot holes. I generally keep about a 16th inch drill bit in this machine, and this stays right on my bench here, dedicated to, to that type of job drilling pilot holes, spotting them so they don't move. Sometimes I like to have two of them. Well, of all things, I get a big package in the mail unannounced, and it's from Sam Schublom from Kansas City, and he gave me one of these. Now, these are very expensive, so thank you, Sam, ever so much, and there was no letter or anything like that in the box, just, just the name on the return address. So, this is really the subject of this video. This machine is in quite good condition. Maybe not as good as this. You can see there's some pecs here on the table. That's very typical. It needs a new belt. Well, so does this one. But I've already gone ahead and ordered one. So there it is. I need... I should have ordered two. But I got a belt. But there is no chuck here. It's missing, or half of it's missing. Part of this is an Albrecht chuck which would be exactly the same as this one. Now, these little chucks are from, uh, as I said, from Germany, and they only go up to about an eighth of an inch, or five thirty seconds. Let's grab the catalog here, because I want to order one. Well, here they are in the KBC catalog. I think I've got two of them, so I'll put one on each one. But uh, it's the zero to one size, so that's the second one down with a zero Jacobs taper and let's see oh my goodness they're three hundred and sixty nine dollars guess they won't be ordering one of those well let's see what Jacobs has to offer here's the Jacobs in a plain key type and in the number zero Jacobs taper which will be from, uh, let's see, five thirty seconds uh, capacity. All right, that's a, a little bit larger. Well, how much is that? Eighty-three dollars, eighty-four dollars. Even that's a little bit beyond my budget. What else can I do? I just remembered that I have this, and some of you may recognize this, whatever it is, from one of my What Is It videos. And this was given to me by, given to me by Fred Newman you know, three years ago. We never did figure out what it is. But it has one of those little Jacob's Chucks, just like I showed you. Just a little tinge of rust down there. Looks like a good Chuck. Now that needs to be separated. That's the number zero Jacob's taper. So how am I going to get that apart? Now I need a little Jacob's chuck key and I thought I saw one of these in one of these drawers here. Ah. Well I don't know what that is. It's not a Jacob's but I believe that one will fit. And it does indeed fit, so I need to take the chuck off. But not only do I need to take the chuck off of this quill or this spindle or whatever this is, and it's got bearings in it, but it's 
it's really something that I can't use. There's one of the bearings. I also have to remove that partial chuck that is still on the drill press. This is my older micro drill press that I have long had and you can see that this is where the Jacobs taper is. And this is the newly acquired one. You can see that it's an Albrecht. And I don't know why that's missing, but it's but probably long gone, never to be found. So I need to separate it right here and I will use wedges for that. Jacob's wedges. I hope you watched that last video on Jacob's tapers because I discuss at length these Jacob's uh, wedges and I have them in sizes one, two, and three way way too big even the small one the number one is way too large and as you can see here they offer four different sizes and the number one is meant for a number one Jacob's taper well I have a zero Jacob's taper on the little Albrecht what will I do well I went on to the Cameron drill press website and they offer a set of them for $17 but of course I would have to send away and there would be shipping on top of it and that would be 10 days before I could uh, finish the job. So I plan to make a set. Well not only do I plan, but I have made a set. I did not want to take the time in this video to make these wedges. It really requires an entire video. So watch for a follow up video on how I made these and this is made out of tool steel but they have not been hardened however they can be if they fail it's about a quarter inch slot in here I used a quarter inch end mill but you can see how much smaller these are than even the, the number one size it's a little wider than I need and probably longer but that is irrelevant so these are ready to use I think you might find it interesting how I made these, although it's probably pretty obvious. Let's put them to use. I think you can see there's not a whole lot of room in there. But using them as a pair, trying to center them, that's the general principle now of popping it off. Now how much that will take, I don't know. Can I do it with my hands? I doubt it. Nope, we'll tap it a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens here. Wow, just like downtown, that worked perfectly. And there's the little number zero female. And you can see how small, that's the very smallest Jacobs taper that they make, a number zero. And it just fits into my wedges. So I'm half done. I have this little press sitting on its side and upon examining it there's much less space in here than there was on the other one. In fact not room for two wedges. One wedge barely starts. So I'm going to tap that and see what happens. I think I have it well supported because I do not want to bend it. If I bend that taper, I really bent the spindle. I don't know whether this is hardened or not, but it would ruin the whole machine and I'm sure a new quill would be too expensive. So let's see what one wedge does here. Yes, and there it is, one half of an Albrecht. That piece is only worth 200 bucks. You know what I didn't tell you is that if you watch one of my other auction videos where I went to the so-called West Clocks auction, there were three brand new Albrecht chucks in this size in the box. But at that time I had no interest for them and a buddy of mine bought all three of them and put them on eBay. Just for comparison, this is a number one Jacob's taper. 
and this is the zero, and you can see the dramatic difference between the two. And then they go on up and get larger. There's about six of them that are larger than that. If you want to be educated a little bit more on that, watch that other video. Before I mount this, and I'm assuming this is a good chuck, we'll see if, that, if it runs true, but it is a number zero, Jacobs, up to 530 seconds. But it's a little corroded on this side, so I put an eighth inch shaft in there. I'll put it in the lathe, and I'm going to just brighten that up with scotch bright. I'm quite sure that I have shown before in the videos the Dumore drill press. Even if I haven't, you've seen it now. It looks a bit like a mix master, does it not? I like the looks of this a lot better. So, the reason I'm showing you this is my intentions was to rob, beg, bar, or steal the, the chuck off of this machine. So that was my game plan until rummaging through my junk, which is no small job, and when you're a hoarder, I came across the other spindle that I j just showed you and ended up taking that chuck off. And these two chucks are the same size, and they're both Jacobs. The only problem is they require a key, and the Albrecht is a little bit handier for that purpose. Sometimes when I make a video I repeat myself and I know that and that's because there's always new viewers. But here's uh, some samples of other Albrecht chucks that I have. They're keyless chucks, they're made in Germany and I showed you the catalog a few minutes ago so you know what they cost. And remember I found this one at an auction for 10 bucks not too terribly long ago, that one in the summer, or actually it was a garage sale. And I put a sleeve on there, it's number two. But the, the quality is so high that even without a, 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 a key, you can really, really bear down and tighten the drills uh, so that they will not slip. What I don't like about them is that they're a relatively long chuck compared to, well, let's compare one here. You can see that they're longer. Sometimes that's a big deal, most of the time maybe not. This has a straight shank so I can hold it in a collet on the bridge board. Enough on Albrex. Sidetracked again, but some of you may not know that Jacobs used to make keyless chucks. I don't think they do anymore, but this is a Jacobs Portomatic goes up to a half inch. And I think they were reasonably expensive. Now some of you may not like keyless chucks, and you know why you don't like them? Because you've been dealing with 10 cent chucks that they put on cheap drills that never tighten down. No good. 10 cents. Hundreds of dollars. I know that I'm still sidetracked here, but the wonderful Supreme type, well not Supreme brand, I should say Super Chuck, this is a Jacobs ball bearing chuck. These are very high quality and expensive, but you can basically use these as a keyless on smaller drills. In other words, if you tighten down just with your grip an eighth inch bit, it's probably not going to slip. I know my brother does that all the time. I, I should make a whole video on the merits of the ball bearing chuck. And now for the finale, the mounting of the chuck, and I've cleaned the taper here and the internal taper. Notice that I've backed the jaws off so I do not hit them. On it goes, and I clean that with brake cleaner and let it dry. Remember they're self-holding tapers that do not require any Loctite. There it is. There it is. I put a sixteenth inch drill bit in there. Let's fire it up. Ah, oh, the sweet smell of ozone. Looks like she runs pretty true. Now I'll have to put the new belt on and a few other modifications and tune-ups and uh, this little baby is ready to put into service. Well, 
Thank you, Sam. Thank you for watching. Be sure and watch that video when available on how to make wedges to remove Jacob's chucks. And these did work fine without hardening. I figured that they would because there just cannot be all that much force. No, that's not the word. They can't be stuck that bad with a taper that small. Now, when you get into the larger one, boy, you, you might really have to pound on them. And I do show how to take a larger one off in one of those other videos, so watch that. And I guess this is just scrap metal, so thank you very much for watching. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.